Hi, I'm Dr. Edmonds at UCLA. I'm going to be talking about what's new in stopping seizures quickly. Um, so this is an exciting topic. There's been some developments over the last couple of years, and I'm excited to share those things with you and talk about what is coming ahead as well. All right, and feel free to ask questions or review this later as it's being recorded. All right, so first of all, just a quick review of what um, you know, different seizure types are. Um, back in 2017, the International League Against Epilepsy classified um, the different seizure types and made them simplified in the sense that there are focal seizures, uh, meaning that they start from one, one side of the body or with one area being affected. Um, these can both be involving when you're not aware of the episode um, or with the preserved consciousness. Um, and they therefore can be both motor involvement or non-motor, so like staring um, or focal motor movements. Um, and they can then progress to full body shaking and generalization. Um, but generalized seizures are the ones that start all together um, at the same time with full body shaking or complete loss of consciousness. Um, and so we can see those as well, um, like tonic clonic, which were typically common to see on TV or um, for generalized epilepsies. Um, absence would be the non-motor one that we see most commonly with that. Um, and then there's also ones that we have unknown onset of exactly where they start um, and evaluating those as well. Um, so all of these seizure types are ones that we can help use rescue medications for stopping if they become prolonged. So what are the different medications that we can use? Um, the one that everyone's probably the most familiar with is the rectal gel, um, which is brand name Diastat. Um, the generic name is diazepam. Um, and that's been around uh, for quite a while now. But some of the newer ones um, that you may or may not be as familiar with, um, clonazepam um, has also been around for a while and comes in both a tablet and a dissolvable wafer. Um, and we do use that as well at times um, for seizure clustering. And that's one I can talk about briefly here um, as I don't focus on it so much later. Um, Ativan is something we use IV or intramuscularly in the hospital, um, or sometimes the paramedics will have that with them to give emergently. Um, but that's one that is given by the medical provider. Um, and then the newer options, which hopefully you guys are familiar with, um, or if not, you're coming to this talk to hear about them, are the intranasal medications. Um, and that includes nasolam, uh, which is um, intranasal ver uh, versed, um, or midazolam is the generic name. Um, or there is the uh, newest one, which is intranasal valtoco, which is a nasal form of diazepam. So it's the same medication as diastat, but in a nasal application. Um, just to circle back to clonazepam, we use this medication um, most commonly um, for seizure clustering, um, when the seizures become a little bit longer or more frequent than usual. Um, and we know that kids, it can be a good medication because they can um, you know, dissolve that wafer in their mouth um, if they're you know, able to focus for that um, or through the G-tube um, to be able to give it that way. Um, and so that medication can also be helpful. Um, if you have the, the liquid version of clonazepam, um, which some of the specialty pharmacies will have make that up, you can give it. All right. Um, hi, welcome. Um, so we're just getting started. I was just reviewing the types of rescue medications. Um, and just to restate that, there's the diastat rectal gel, um, the clonazepam, which is you know the wafer, or sometimes it comes in a liquid version um, at specialty pharmacy, pharmacies. We use Ativan. Um, in the hospital, and then the newer medications, which hopefully you've heard of, are the Valtoco or Nasolam, which are the intranasal medications. And so we'll be talking more about those. Um, but first, you know, what what are the you know we talk about what the rescue therapies are, but when do we use them? So you know we use them to stop prolonged seizures um, or clusters that are longer than usual. Um, so a longer than usual seizure we would say is five minutes or longer of convulsive activity, or Non-convulsive activity, meaning the non-motor seizures um, or focal seizures lasting more than 10 minutes. Um, and, you know, each case is um, individualized. And so, you know, depending on your provider and your child, there may be slight differences in how we recommend going about using rescue medications for the timing and what type of seizures we would use them for. 
but these are kind of the general parameters that we all think about. Um, and when we talk about clustering, we're talking about you know brief, um, repetitive seizures within a short amount of time, you know, over the course of 15 minutes or to an hour, um, and how frequently those are occurring um, is also a reason for using a rescue medication. Um, the reason that the five minutes is set for those convulsive seizures is that we know that after that five minute mark, it gets a lot harder to stop the seizures and we get worried about the complicating effects of respiratory depression um, and being able to not stop the seizures um, easily if we don't start with the rescue medication by around five minutes. Um, and these are something that are used in addition to the daily medication, um, just an, as on, ad, on, on an as needed basis. Um, so they're not for daily use. And the intent is that these are medications that can be given by the parents or the care providers at school um, and that they're easy to use and administer. Um, and by doing this, the idea is that we can prevent the seizures from progressing so that then you don't need to be into the hospital. We don't need to be giving IV medications. Um, and hopefully you can continue to um, watch them under at home and just let your provider know, hey, this happened, we gave the rescue medication, things are going okay, and then we can you know, make decisions from there. Um, and so the, the FDA has approved multiple medications now for this. Uh, for the longest time, we just had diastat available for rescue medications. Um, but in the last two years, we've had both Nasolam and Valtoco approved, which are the intranasal medications, which we'll talk about more. Um, so first we'll talk about Valtoco. This is the most uh, recent one that was approved back in January 10th of 2020. Um, this is approved for the acute treatment of intermittent stereotypic episodes of frequent seizure activity in adults and children six years of age and older. Um, so there is that kind of minimal age of six. Um, it comes in various uh, dosages. Um, so there's a five milligram dose, a 10 milligram dose, 15 milligram dose, and a 20 milligram dose. Um, and a second dose can be given if seizures continue. So if they're, if the cluster is continuing or if it's been four hours since the um, initial um, time that it was given, it can be given again um, at least four hours after the first dose. Uh, we don't recommend giving more than two doses. Um, again, all of the benzodiazepams, the biggest concern would be respiratory depression, that we don't want these to be given without you know, a medical provider being aware. Um, if you're going to be given a second dose, you definitely want to make sure that from a respiratory standpoint that everything's stable and that there's someone there to help if there was to be an issue. Um, the great part about Valtoco, um, you, know, you can store it at, at room um, temperature, and the shelf life of the medication is actually over two years. Um, so it's something that you can keep with you. Um, you're not having to like go and recheck and be like, oh yeah, when did, when did I last get my you know, rescue medication? So um, it's very uh, easy to use in that sense as well. Um, so I just wanna give you guys some visuals um, of this. There are um, the, four, the four different um, dosages and the way it's set up is that for the five and the 10, it's just one um, nasal applicator that you get. Um, and for the 15 and the 20, um, you actually get two, um, and you do two to complete the full dose. Um, and talking about the um, half-life here, um, I should actually update this because the FDA actually expanded their, like I mentioned, their shelf life is closer to two years now, but they're, you can always check the expiration date um, on the back of the pack. Um, so how do we actually use this? Um, so Valtoco comes with this um, nasal applicator um, and what you do is you hold it um, with your fingers on top, thumb below, um, and it's kind of firm on the bottom. So you don't want you, um, you know, if you just by touching it, you're not going to cause it to push in right away. Um, so you just kind of rest your fingers there. Um, and then you bring um, the nasal out there up to the nose, insert it into the nose. And when your fingers reach up, um, to resting on the up to where the nose is, you have a nice um, controlled position. And at that point, you can then push the plunger and that will spray uh, the medication into the nose. Um, unlike if you're used to nasal sprays, um, this isn't something where the patient has to be awake. They don't have to inhale it. Um, so there's nothing required on their part. It's just the blood vessels in your nose will absorb the medication. 
um, over over just a few minutes. Um, and so that's really nice that you don't, you just have to have the patient you know where they're laying still enough that you can administer it into the nose. Um, the one thing that's important also is you know because of the way this is designed, you don't want to um, hold on to and be like, oh, I wonder if it's working and test it because then once you push it, you lose your one dose and we wouldn't want that to happen. Um, so there, there's no need to test it. Um, just make sure it's in the right position and then go ahead and spray that. Um, I don't know if you guys have smartphones with you, but if you're welcome to, this is recorded or if you wanna take a picture, there are some QR codes I included um, with instructional videos. Um, so the company's developed these um, so that if you want the video demonstration, um, you're more than welcome to, to do that. Um, so I'll just give people a second if they would like to look at those or get that uh, QR code here down the bottom. And like I said, this will be recorded. Um, one thing also is that, you know, a lot of our patients are in school. Um, and so there are resources for schools for these medications. Um, and there's training kits um, that the schools can get um, along with information and um, videos. And so if that's something that would be helpful for the school that your child attends, um, there's also these resources through the, the website as well. Um, and the QR code you can see there. Um, the next medication that I want to talk about is Nasalam. Um, so this was approved in 2019 of May, um, and it is also for acute treatment of intermittent stereotypic episodes of frequent seizure activity. So that's both um, seizure clusters and repetitive seizures. Um, and this is approved for ages 12 and older. So as I mentioned before, the Valtoco is down to age six. Um, Nasalam is only down to age 12. Um, very similar medication. Um, however, it is midazolam um, versus diazepam. They're both benzodiazepam medications that cause, you know, the concern for drowsiness and respiratory depression, but are effective at stopping seizures. Um, and so this medication is um, very effective. And some, some patients um, like it better. They think maybe that the patients are less drowsy after the medication based on the half-life of how long the medication is in the system. Um, but either Nasalam or Valtoco can both work very well um, for stopping the seizures, which is the main point. Um, and the medication comes as a um, five milligram nasal spray um, that's given in one nostril. And then a second dose can be given if needed um, with a continuing cluster or prolonged seizure um, mm. 10 minutes after the first dose. Um, so there's really just the one size applicator um, that's intranasal. And if after giving the first one, there's not a good response, you can give a second one in 10 minutes. Um, and each box comes with two of those single use um, sprays. Um, again, it stores at room temp. The shelf life um, is, is about two years um, as well. So, you know, very, very easy to use product. And as you can see, the Nasalam documentation and information here is the same basically as Valtoco in that you, know, you hold the applicator in the same way um, with fingers on top, thumb below, um, and don't press the plunger yet. Um, and then bring um, your fingers up to resting below the nose with the applicator in the nose and then push the plunger. Okay, and we do this again for the seizure cluster or seizures lasting um, five minutes or longer. They're, they're convulsive or the non-motor type steering usually about after about 10 minutes. But again, this is a little um, more focused on what, um, what your particular physician thinks is best for your patient. Um, and there's also a QR code here, again, for instructional videos, if that's something that would be helpful. Um, there's resources again for the school um, and you know, the, te the tester equipment and videos and things like that. Um, again, if your child um, uses this in the school, wants um, additional help with how to administer this, these resources can be really helpful and the company provides all of this. Um, so I do wanna talk briefly about diastat. Uh, it's the most common medication um, you know, that we've prescribed in the past for um, seizure rescue. Um, given that it was approved back in 1997 um, and prior to Nasalam in uh, 2019 really was the only medication um, 
to be given by the at-home provider um, or caretaker um, for prolonged seizures. Um, and so, as, as I'm sure many of you are aware, um, this comes as a gel um, inside of a, a tube um, and there's different doses that it comes in. Um, there's a five milligram dose, 10 milligram, 15 milligram, and 20 milligrams. And um, there's a dial that the pharmacist can actually set um, to the dose that's requested. Um, and a second dose can be given um, at four hours or more if there's continuing um, clusters of activity. Um, so similar is the same four hours as the Valtoco because they're both the same medication, the diazepam. Um, this is uh, you know it's stable at room temperature. It's um, you know a little bit bigger um, to carry around with you than the nasal applicators, um, but works well um, and is is well proven at this point. Um, this diagram's a little um, less friendly to have to look at, um, but. Basically, the idea is that you can see it comes in the kit. Um, the medication is loaded in this tube. Everything's set um, to where you need it to be. Um, it comes with a lubricating jelly. You're going to lubricate the tip. Um, you're going to find the rectum, and then you're going to gently insert the tip into the rectum. And the um, rim of the injector should be snug against the rectal opening. So just like when you have the, the nostril applicator, you get your fingers up there and it rests the same thing, except here it's the rim of the applicator that's resting. Um, and once you're in that position, you slowly count to three and push the plunger in um, until it stops and then count to three before um, you pull the plunger out and then hold the, hold the butt cheeks together um, to make sure the medication stays there and gets absorbed. Um, and then again, it should over the next few minutes be, um, be stopping the seizure, okay? Um, so the things that come along with, with diastat, you get your supply kit, um, you know, seizure action plan, um, you know, basically the standard at all schools now is for seizure action plan so that the nurse knows what the medication is, how to administer it, what the doctor's recommendations are. Um, and so you have this as just this basically list what we just went over is so you get the syringe with the lube, the instruction sheet, gloves, um, you know, something for privacy at school is always good. Um, or if you're out in public wipes, um, extra clothes. Um, so definitely it's a little more involved. But the thing about diastat is it's approved down to age two. So certainly for all of our younger patients. Um, so for your kids, um, you know, it's, a, it's pretty easy um, to be able to administer it for them. Um, and and we're and again, you know, stores that were at room temp and is, is easy to carry around with you. Um, so side effects, um, this is for for diastat, but really for any of the benzos. Um, so the mild side effects that we often, you know, um, have patients experience are drowsiness or sleepiness. Sometimes they can feel a little dizzy. Sometimes they can cause diarrhea. That's more so from the diastat, given that it's given rectally. Um, severe side effects um, would be the breathing issue, so shallow breathing. Um, slurred speech, mood changes, restlessness. Um, sometimes it's a little tricky to tease these things out because, you know, if your child's just gone through a significant seizure, they may have some of these symptoms just, you know, be kind of out of it from having had the seizure as well. Um, but again, if you, this is your first time to use any of these medications, we, we do recommend, you know, that you are calling, you know, 911 to let someone be there that, to observe and make sure everything's safe. Um, if you've given the medications before, you know, then you can, you know, assess uh, reasonably, but it's always a good idea to make sure that a medical provider is there to make sure that things are um, safe and if anything further would escalate that you have someone there to, to help provide for that. Um, so now I just briefly want to touch on a new medication that's coming out, um, hopefully to be approved. Oh, you know what? This is the wrong year. Um, hopefully to be approved in 2022. Um, but this is called... Um, Livervant, um, and it's a buccal medication of diazepam. So just like Valtoco and um, dias, diastat were diazepam, this is another form of di diazepam, but it's in a, um, well, you can see this dissolvable film. It's like a biofilm that they've created. And so they're hoping to get this approved in this next year. Um, and if you're familiar with it, it's the same company and technology that was made for Sympazam, which is a 
um, biofilm medication given for um, onfi or clobazium. Um, and so basically the idea is that you can carry around this little like band-aid packet thing that you open with the film um, and then you're able to um, just pull the cheek out you know you don't want to reach your fingers all the way into the mouth but just pull the cheek out and slide that um, film into the cheek and then it gets um, absorbed and the medication is delivered that way um, and so I think this will be a really exciting thing for us to be able to provide to to families because compared to diastat um, where you have to have the kit and everything and you have to um, you know, administer it rectally, this is something that can be given um, to the mouth um, in a pretty easy way. Um, they're hoping to get approval, I think, at least to age six, but ideally to age two, given that, you know, diastack was all the way down to age two. Um, so um, that's an exciting thing to look forward to. Um, and certainly, you know, we can, you know, your neurologist can keep you posted on that, um, but there's no exact date given by the FDA yet. It's still, um, they're still seeking the formal approval on that. But I just want to make sure everyone aware that that's something that's coming and can be, I think, a really nice option, um, especially if they give you multiple um, in, a, in a pack when you pick it up from the pharmacy. You know, there may be, you know, if you get anywhere, you know, four or six or something like that, it'd be a lot more convenient than just having your like one diostat um, tube. Um, so those are the main things I wanted to hit on this talk. Uh, special thanks to Beck Reyes. She's one of our UCLA um, pediatric neurology nurse practitioners who helped put these slides together um, and has given similar presentations to schools and done a great job. Um, and then also Dr. Jason Lerner, um, who's a pediatric epileptologist um, here just for the information regarding this new buccal diazepam um, film medication. Um, does anyone have any questions? So um, this this was recorded. So if anyone wants to come back and look at this, or you want to you know refer to your friends, um, you know more than welcome to. And um, thanks everyone for your attention.